I asked GPT-4 to make a better monster manual with 20 unique monsters. I also asked Dolly 2 to make artwork for these monsters based on GPT-4's descriptions of them. And with that being said, let's take a look. The first monster is the Azurite Golem, a large crystalline construct infused with elemental air. Its sharp edges and swift movements make it a deadly foe, while its crystalline form allows it to react and deflect magical attacks. So the Azurite Golem is a CR11 large construct with 17 AC and 152 HP. It has a few unique attributes that make it stand out. For example, Refraction Field. When the Golem is subjected to a spell or magical effect that requires an attack roll, it gains plus two to its AC, or crystalline burst, which recharges on a 5 or a 6. The golem releases a burst of refracted energy in a 30-foot cone. Each creature in that area must make a DC 16 dexterity saving throw, taking 60 10 radiant damage on a fail, or half as much on a success. And it has this legendary action called Refraction Surge, which is basically a single target crystalline burst. These abilities are great, if only because they tie in so well with the flavor of this monster, and I think it'd be very, very fun to narrate this during a combat encounter. Note that its one AoE effect is limited by a read charge, and that's going to be a recurring theme throughout all of these monsters. In fact, I think there's only two monsters of the 20 that it generated that do not use a recharge ability. So as we go through, keep that in mind and let me know what you think about that. For the artwork, I fed Dolly to the descriptions written by GPT-4, and I got these very Pokemon-esque depictions of the Azurite Golem. Number two is the Bloodfire Wisp. The Bloodfire Wisp is a benevolent spirit that feeds on the life forces of living creatures, growing stronger as it siphons their vitality. With its ability to ignite victims in searing flames, it is a formidable opponent in any battle. This is essentially a vampiric fire bug, and it's honestly kind of terrifying. It is a CR5 small elemental that has fire absorption, which basically means any fire damage it takes actually heals it instead. And it also has this crazy ability called Bloodfire Ignition, which recharges on a five or a six. With Bloodfire Ignition, the Bloodfire Wisp targets one creature it can see within 30 feet. That target must succeed on a DC 14 dexterity saving throw or be ignited in searing flames. Oh my god. The ignited creature takes 4d6 fire damage at the start of each of its turns. A creature can end this effect by using its action to make a DC 12 dexterity check to extinguish the flames. In other words, stop, drop, and roll. It also has a legendary action called Bloodfire Shield. When the Bloodfire Wisp is targeted by an attack, it can use its reactions surround itself with a shield of flames. It gains a plus two bonus to AC against the triggering attack, and the attacker takes 2d6 fire damage. So basically like a more armored hellish rebuke. This all gives a very chaotic, very fiery feeling, and actually reminds me a lot of that one flame from that episode of SpongeBob. And despite that reference, its ability to literally light people on fire and hit them with a responsive scorch makes it a very formidable opponent. And Dolly 2's depiction only adds to that. Especially this one, which reminds me of uh, Diablo if it was a scented candle. Number three is the Cavern Whisperer. The Cavern Whisperer is a subterranean creature with an insect-like exoskeleton and elongated limbs. It uses echolocation to navigate the darkness and can emit a disorienting high-pitched screech that stuns its prey. Cavern Whisperer to me is just Siren Head underground, not only because of its appearance and size, which is large, but also because of its disorienting screech ability, which recharges on a five or a six. With this ability, the Cavern Whisperer emits a high-pitched screech on a 20-foot cone. Each each creature in that area must make a DC 15 constitution saving throw. On a failed save, the creature is stunned until the start of its next turn. On a successful save, the creature is deafened for one minute. A deafened creature can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. This is a fun concept of ability, and while being stunned is a justifiably intense condition to have on a fail, deafened is a nice balance because deafened is arguably the most forgiving condition to have. The only note I have is that as it's written, people who fail on that save, do not become deafened, but they become stunned. I would argue that if they are failing, they would also be deafened, more so than the people who succeeded. The artwork for the Cavern Whisperer ranges from a friendly Hollow Knight NPC to a nightmare cave drawing of a crawdad. Overall, this one wasn't necessarily my favorite, but that does not mean it was bad. 
Number four is the Dusk Chaser. The Dusk Chaser is a lithe, shadowy feline with ghostly fur that blends seamlessly into the darkness. Its unnatural speed and agility combined with its ability to phase through solid objects makes it an expert ambush predator. This creature is spooky and has a couple of great abilities. Pounce. If the Dusk Chaser moves at least 20 feet in a straight line towards a creature and then hits it with a claw attack, that creature must make a DC 15 strength saving throw or be knocked prone. And if it is knocked prone, then the Dusk Chaser gets to use a bonus action to attack with a claw attack. And it has Ethereal Ambush, which recharges on a 5 or 6. With Ethereal Ambush, the Dusk Chaser disappears into the Ethereal Plane, reappearing up to 30 feet away in a location it can see. It can then make a claw attack with advantage, and if the attack hits, it deals an additional 2d6 psychic damage. That one in particular is awesome, if you ask me. Imagine this thing blipping out of the plane and then blipping back in behind you and just attacking you. I love it, especially because I think any kind of battlefield mobility is going to make a more more fun encounter, at least most of the time. The artwork for the Dusk Chaser, though, is basically Salem from Sabrina. He's just a black cat, although this one's kind of cool. Continuing with the dark, hard to trace theme, number five is the Ebon Serpent. The Ebon Serpent is a massive jet black snake with venomous fangs capable of paralyzing its prey. Its scales absorb light, making it nearly invisible in darkness, and its powerful coils can constrict victims with crushing force. You would expect some kind of abilities beyond better stealth and darkness and other standard snake stuff, but that's pretty much all this is, is a dark, hard to see snake. And even Dolly too agrees. And you know what? Big scary snakes are still big and they're still scary and that's just fine. Note that this is one of the only creatures generated by GPT-4 that does not have a recharge ability. Number six is the Frostgale Worm. The Frostgale Worm is a majestic and powerful dragon that rules the frozen peaks and icy tundras. Its breath weapon unleashes an icy blast, freezing foes in their tracks, while its razor-sharp claws and tail make it a deadly adversary in combat. The Frostgale Worm is a CR-13 cold dragon, and it does cold stuff, and it does dragon stuff. One fun legendary action, though, is its wing attack. Each creature within 10 feet of the Frostgale Worm must succeed in a DC-20 dexterity saving throw, or take 2d8 plus 7 bludgeoning damage and be knocked prone. The Frostgale Worm can then fly half their movement. Again, any abilities that add to battlefield mobility are great, and this one's awesome because it's an action taken outside of its own turn, allows it to do damage, knock people prone, and also move. And that adds on to the whole complexity of battlefield movement because those prone creatures must now use half their movement to stand up. This can lead to a really fun scenario where a lot of martial classes that only attack melee typically are scrambling to close the distance between them and this very threatening foe. The artwork is fine, but I'm particularly a big fan of this depiction, which is icy, snowy, and has a nice little frost breath weapon. Number seven is the Grave Walker. The Grave Walker is a sinister figure that roams graveyards, crypts, and other places of the dead, spreading despair and dread. Its mere presence can instill terror in the hearts of those nearby, and its power to summon undead minions from the earth makes it a formidable opponent. The Grave Walker is a CR-8 undead, and it has a nice range of very spooky powers. For instance, an aura of despair requiring a wisdom save of nearby creatures to avoid being frightened, a withering touch that reduces current and max HP until a long rest, and a rechargeable Grave Summon ability which allows it to summon 1d4 plus 1 zombies under its control. This is a great undead variant to have guarding a graveyard or a crypt and has enough potential to be a boss or at least a mini boss with a lot of personality. The images for this creature vary so wildly that I really don't know how to feel about them, but maybe you do, so let me know. Number eight is the Hive Mind Mykonid. The Hive Mind Mykonid is a powerful, intelligent fungal creature that controls and coordinates the actions of lesser Mykonids through a telepathic network. Capable of strategizing and making complex decisions, it leads its fungal kin in defense of their territory and in pursuit of their collective goals. This variation on a Mykonid is a CR7 plant and can use a bonus action called Mycelium Network to command any number of Mykonids within 120 feet to move and attack. Additionally, it has a rechargeable fungal blast and can regenerate HP every turn. However, because the Mycelium Network lets it command any number of other Myconids to move and attack as a bonus action, one should take great caution when considering how many other Myconids are in the area when you're using the Hive Mind Myconid as a creature. As for the artwork, Dolly 2 gave us a bunch of fungus, which is fair because that's basically what this is. 
Number nine is the Iron Scale Basilisk. The Iron Scale Basilisk is a fearsome reptilian creature with scales that are as hard as iron, giving it formidable protection against attacks. Its petrifying gaze can turn enemies to stone, making it a dangerous opponent for any adventurer. This CR5 monster has pretty much standard bite and tail attacks, but also has a rechargeable petrifying gaze ability, which could cause creatures to become petrified. This can be alleviated by good saving throws or simply not looking at the basilisk. However intimidating that may be, remember that it's really just a lizard. In fact, it's kind of cute, unless that's what it wants me to think. Number 10 is the Jadeling Swarm. The Jadeling Swarm is a collection of small animated jade shards that move as one, like a swarm of insects. They are known for their agility and ability to overwhelm their targets using their razor sharp edges to slice through flesh and armor alike. These elemental creatures are difficult to defeat due to their size and immunity to various conditions. There's not much to say about the Jadeling Swarm. It's a CR4 swarm elemental. It has a rechargeable AoE attack, but otherwise nothing too special. If this feels like a perfectly average filler monster that you'd find in the monster manual, then you're right. But remember that this is still written by a robot. The artwork for the Jailing Swarm goes from 3D printed miniatures, which are adorable, to an early 2000s MMO enemy, to whatever the hell this is, and to this. So, you know. At this point, we are halfway through GPT-4's improved monster manual. If you'd like to see all these put into a home brewery PDF for you to actually look at and use as if they were real monsters, let me know. If I see at least 25 comments asking for this, then I will go through and put these all into one document and I'll make them accessible. But that being said, some of my favorite monsters that it came up with are in the last 10, so let's get into them now. Number 11 is the Kelp Drifter. The Kelp Drifter is a stealthy aquatic plant creature that lurks in shallow waters and kelp forests. It is capable of ensnaring its prey with long tentacles and releasing a burst of kelp strands to entangle multiple foes. The Kelp Drifter's natural camouflage and affinity for aquatic environments makes it a formidable ambush predator. The Kelp Drifter is a large CR5 plant that has a tentacle attack and a rechargeable ensnaring kelp attack. For the ensnaring kelp attack, on a failed strength save, you become restrained but you can use an action to make an athletics check to try to break free. Just imagine being grabbed by this in some kind of dark, murky water. <laughs> These depictions are all very fishy, but I am a very big fan of this hand-drawn look. Number 12 is the Lumivore. The Lumivore is a mysterious creature that dwells in the darkest depths, using its innate ability to create hypnotic patterns of light to lure out its prey. It is highly agile and nimble, able to avoid damage with ease. The Lumivore's sensitivity to light makes it averse to bright environments, but it is a formidable hunter in the darkness. The Lumivore is a CR5 aberration and is absolutely meant to be inspired by a anglerfish, and that's confirmed by its rechargeable luminescent lure. The Lumivore creates a hypnotic pattern of light in a 30-foot cone, and each creature in that area must make a DC 14 wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, that creature becomes charmed and is incapacitated for one minute, or until it takes damage or is slapped awake. If the creature is charmed, it can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turn, ending the effect on a success. The artwork for the Lumivore feels like I'm about to meet God, but perhaps that's what it feels like when it uses its light trick on you. God? 13 is the Magma Strider. The Magma Strider is a powerful elemental creature formed from the molten rock of volcanic regions. Its heated body can scorch those who come too close while it effortlessly traverses walls and ceilings. With the ability to expel a deadly stream of molten lava, the Magma Strider is a dangerous foe to encounter. The Magma Strider is a CR7 large elemental that is basically a walking volcano. It puts off a 40 foot radius of light, deals 1d10 damage to any creature that touches it, and can spew a 30 foot long 5 foot wide stream of magma, and you guessed it, this one is rechargeable as well. Whatever formula GPT-4 has for these stat blocks, it seems to heavily weight the inclusion of rechargeable ability. That being said, I don't think any of these feel forced. In fact, I think they all feel very appropriate and a nice balanced element for most of these stat blocks. And the artwork for the Magma Strider is fire! And I mean that in both senses, because it's really, really cool. I think it's a great visual. 
Number 14 is the Nether Stalker. The Nether Stalker is a fiendish creature that stalks the shadows, hunting its prey across the plains. With the ability to see into the ethereal plane and move through solid objects, it is difficult to escape from or hide from this malevolent being. The Nether Stalker is known for its chilling shadow drain, which drains life energy from its victims and heals the creature. The Nether Stalker is a CR8 large fiend and is very ethereal in nature, as the description suggests. It can see into the ethereal plane, it can move through objects and creatures as if they were difficult terrain, and it has a reflavored life drain ability that's called Shadow Drain. This would be terrifying in a close quarters dungeon, simply because it can easily slip from one room to another by passing through walls, and tracking it down would be very, very difficult. It would truly feel like you're being stalked by a very malicious creature of the dark. And I'll tell you what, which of these do you think best represents this creature? Let me know in the comments. Number 15 is the Ooze Forge Colossus. The Ooze Forge Colossus is a massive construct infused with acidic ooze, making it incredibly resilient and dangerous. Its huge crushing limbs can pulverize enemies and its acid cannon can unleash a devastating torrent of acidic ooze. The Ooze Forge Colossus is immune to many forms of damage and can even absorb acid to heal itself. This is a CR 17 gargantuan construct, boasting an AC of 19 and an HP of 297. The Ooze Forge might be my my favorite on this list simply because of the visual, of the flavor. Basically this giant Power Rangers-like mech made of a bunch of dungeon fodder oozes. I think it's awesome. It also has a rechargeable acid cannon, which seems to fit really well. But look at what Dolly 2 did with this description. I mean, this is not what I had in mind, but I think these visuals are really, really fun. I actually want this one as a poster on my wall or in a shirt. Hmm. Number 16 is the Prismalisk. Prismalisk is a rare and dangerous creature that thrives in areas with high concentrations of magic. Its body is covered in shimmering crystalline scales, which give it the ability to emit a dazzling prismatic spray. This unpredictable and powerful attack can deal a variety of elemental damage or inflict debilitating conditions on its foes. The Prismalisk is a formidable opponent capable of withstanding many types of magical attacks. The Prismalisk is a CR8 large monstrosity, but it is really just a walking chromatic orb spell. It's the most interesting aspect is definitely the Prismatic Spray ability that it has. Prismatic Spray recharges on a 6, and the Prismalisk exhales a 60-foot cone of Prismatic Energy. Each creature in that area must make a DC 15 Dexterity saving throw. For each target, roll a D8 to determine the color of the ray that strikes them and apply the corresponding effect. So for this, 1 through 8 on that D8 basically change the type of damage, and it's always 4 D6 of that damage. 6, 7, and 8, though, get really, really interesting. Six essentially gives you a series of death saving throws, reflavored to either turn the character to stone on three failures or break the effect with three successes. These are all based on constitution saving throws. This is super intense, but I really, really like it. Number seven blinds a target on a failed save, but at the start of its next turn, the target has to make a DC 15 wisdom saving throw or be transported to another plane of existence. What's interesting about both of these is that you have multiple saving throws to make. This makes all these abilities feel very intense and very latched on to the creatures affected by them. And then 8 causes the target to be struck by 2 rays, and thus you roll 2d8 and take both of the effects, re-rolling any 8s that might come up. As someone who cut their teeth playing D&D as a wild magic sorcerer, I find myself very, very drawn to this monster. I think it's awesome, even though some of its abilities are sort of character ending. But hey, what's a fun encounter without a little bit of stakes, you know? And now for the artwork, it's just, it's trippy as hell, but they got the chromatic slash prismatic aspect right. Number 17 is the Quicksand Shambler. The Quicksand Shambler is an elemental creature composed of sand and earth, able to glide through the ground with ease. It is a master of creating dangerous quicksand pools, restraining its enemies, and making escape difficult. With its powerful slam attacks and siege abilities, the Quicksand Shambler is a formidable opponent that can wreak havoc on any unsuspecting travelers. So this is a CR-17 large elemental that can glide through non-magical and unworked sand without disturbing it, and can also do double damage to buildings. So I'm already seeing this as the perfect monster to attack 
some kind of desert oasis. Not only that though, but it can create 20 foot pools of quicksand for one minute, which can restrain any characters within it depending on his strength saving throw. And oh my God, this is the weirdest art yet. This is some kind of off-brand cereal mascot. I have no idea what the hell this is supposed to be. And the other two are just kind of wild. None of these match my mental image of this creature, but hey, that's how it is sometimes. Especially considering that these descriptions weren't really written to become visuals. Number 18 is the Runebound Guardian. The Runebound Guardian is a powerful construct created by skilled mages to serve as a protector of valuable knowledge or arcane artifacts. Imbued with magical runes, the Guardian is resistant to spells and can unleash devastating arcane blasts upon its enemies. Its formidable strength and unwavering dedication make it a challenging adversary for anyone seeking to breach the sanctity of the place that it guards. This is a CR9 large construct that is highly resistant to magic damage and effects and does a cool little runic blast AoE cone attack. I love the flavor and particularly I love the idea of throwing this against a group of spellcasters in a big cavern or ancient dungeon. Let's see how it looks though. Very stone-like. Number 19 is the Siren Stalker. The Siren Stalker is a cunning predator that uses its enchanting song to lure its victims into a false sense of security before attacking with its sharp claws. It is equally at home in the water and on land, making it a versatile hunter. The Siren Stalker's mimicry ability allows it to blend seamlessly into its environment, making it a deadly foe for anyone who wandered too close to its haunting melodies. So the Siren Stalker is a CR5 medium monstrosity that is capable of mimicry, is amphibious, and can produce a siren song that causes creatures who fail a wisdom save to run towards the Siren Stalker in a direct line. You can repeat the save whenever running along that path would cause a charmed creature to be in danger and at the end of the charmed creature's turn. It would be so fun to have this in some kind of terrain that is spotted with pools of lava or acid or other kinds of dangerous obstacle. The idea of seeing a party member to start sprinting off in one direction without any heed of what might be in front of them is just such a fun visual. And the artwork in this is kind of a mix of surreal, existential, and terrifying which is fitting, I suppose. And then last but not least, we have number 20, which is the Thunderhoof Behemoth. The Thunderhoof Behemoth is a massive quadrupedal creature with a thick armored hide and two large curved horns that crackle with electricity. It is known for its devastating charge attacks and its ability to unleash a deafening thunderous roar. With its immense strength and resistance to lightning, the Thunderhoof Behemoth is a formidable opponent that is feared by many who dwell in the regions where it roams. So this creature is a CR11 huge monstrosity and is basically an electrified thunderous bull. It can charge, gore, stomp, and roar. And the roar can cause thunder damage and make targets go deaf. And the art is about what I expected. This is it as a Godzilla puppet. This is it from the future. And this is it as an action figure coming soon. And that's all we have for today. Please let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. Were you impressed? Were you surprised? Were you disappointed? What kind of emotion did you feel when you saw all of these AI generated monster stat blocks? Which one was your favorite and which one was your least favorite? I spent a lot of time exploring this interaction between AI and tabletop role playing games. So if you want to see more content like this, remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to ring the bell to never miss a future video, you can do that as well. Either way, thank you for watching and have an excellent day.